Hey guys, this is Billy from adultcello.com. Today I want to do one of those what's in my case videos that you see from string players on YouTube. So we'll dive right in, we'll check out what's in my case, what kind of equipment I'm using, and I'll try to give some helpful advice on the way. So with that said, let's get started. So this is the case I use. Uh, it's called Brack Case. The maker is a guy in Switzerland and he actually makes canoes and boats as well which is sounds random but the reason I mention it is that of all the cases I've had I've had BAM cases I've had Eastman this case the seal on it the rubber seal is just incredible and so I feel like it really protects the cello well against any kind of moisture or issues like that the latches are excellent it's really sturdy it's going on six years now I haven't had any problems with it what I love about this case, you can probably see on the video itself, there's a neoprene kind of layer that really helps uh, with any kind of temperature differences. And also this kind of neck holder for the cello's neck is great. It really keeps it snug, which I love. So, moving right along, this is the cello I play on. This is my primary cello. It was made by David Foland in Minnesota in 2018. Uh, I love it. It's uh, so I tr when I had to pick my new cello, I tried a ton of instruments. I tried old instruments. I tried a bunch of contemporary instruments. Out of everything I tried, this one just kind of stood out. It has like a really thick, rich ribbon of sound, which I love, and it's also very straightforward, very easy to play. It's it's not temperamental. It's it's not got any kind of funky aspects to it that make it difficult. So that's the cello I use. This is the the primary bow I use. It was made by Claude Thomasen, who's a French bow maker. I feel very lucky to play on it. Um, I love it. It's very kind of a, a smooth. Uh, I don't know French kind of sound. I don't know how to put it, but I love it. So my backup bow is by a German maker, manufacturer, family <laughs> called Gotts. Um, and this is, again, I, I really like playing on it. It's great. As a piece of advice, try at all costs to have a backup bow. The minute you start playing in groups, uh, that's orchestra, chamber music, any kind of ensemble, or especially if you ever start playing gigs, even if you're playing a friend's wedding for free, make sure you have a backup bow. There's, for example, in the frog, on the inside of the frog, there's something that the button, you know, tightens into called the eyelet. That's stripped sometimes. And if you have a stripped eyelet, you cannot tighten the bow. And until that's replaced and fixed, you basically don't have a working bow. All right, moving right along, we're gonna go into the little pouch inside the cello case. First thing I pull out is one set of spare strings. And I say that on purpose because what I used to do is what I've seen a lot of people do. Every time you change strings, you put the old ones in there because you might need them in an emergency. And after a few years, you have this crazy ball of every kind of string, every brand. You don't know if it's old, you don't know if it's totally worn out or if it's relatively new. So I recommend trying Rostanbo, especially if you have a newer sounding instrument and it's it could use some like richness, like kind of like fruity, rich overtones. These strings are great for that. Um, what I currently use on my cello is uh, Perpetual by Perastro. It's, for me, it's, they're a little darker, which I like on that cello. And they're also just really easy. The sign about the tension of the strings just makes them really easy to play. So those are the two sets of strings I kind of go back and forth between. Moving on. Here is a cloth, kind of an emergency cloth. If like a seagull is overhead and something happens to the cello, I can quickly clean it up if there's not another cloth in sight. I don't know what that is. It's just a weird piece of plastic. And then here is my posture peg key. You may have noticed on my cello that I'm missing the, the head of the peg for my C peg. And that's so that it doesn't poke into my neck and I can hold the cello however I want. It's called a posture peg. This is how you actually turn the peg. There's a metal kind of insert here. 
and then it just fits in and turns like a regular peg. If you're struggling with holding your cello and you feel like it's bothering your neck and you just can't seem to get a perfect comfort level with your you know, playing position, you might want to look into a posture peg. I know people who have done both uh, pegs, both the G and the C peg, and you know they, they rave about it. I love it, so there's that. Oh, and here's the peg that I took out. And that's it. So we're going to switch to my bag because I have like a, a fear <laughs> of overstuffing that pouch in there. And then you're driving, especially the LA roads, you know, you hit a pothole and the pouch is so full, it bursts open. And then all these sharp metallic things are now dropping onto your cello and, and you know, damaging it. So I keep most of my stuff in my cello bag. So we'll look at that now. Okay. So I've moved the case and now we're going to just take a look in my music bag. See what we got. Okay. So first off, sheet music. This is a copy of the box suites. So any music I'm working on would go in here. But lately, uh, this is basically 99% of the time how I'm reading sheet music. Incredibly convenient. I have my whole library with me at all times uh, when I take my iPad. All right, moving on. Let's do the little pouch first. So this is a Stretto humidifier. And this is actually supposed to be in my case right now. I have to change the insert because the old one dried up. So that's why it's here. My rule of thumb, I try to shoot for 50% humidity at all times, if possible. Um, that's kind of what, from what I know, the general consensus for instruments. LA is super dry and right now it's crazy dry. It's like 15%. So this will be uh, ready to go and in that case very soon. This is actually hair gel. Um, I don't do hair gel these days anymore. I don't do haircuts anymore as you probably are noticing. Let's go ahead and uh, we don't need to put that back into my case. Two pencils and a pen. Pencils I use to mark up new scores or anything like that. I just need to say to have something, these are Palomino pencils. They're soft lead and they're thick. It's just so nice to have a really nice pencil when you're marking up scores or, or you know, writing anything down. So I highly recommend just going and getting yourself a super nice pencil instead of, you know, just a boring number two pencil. Now here is a second posture peg. I only have one posture peg in my cello, but without one of these things, if my C string completely unfurls, I can't tighten it. So I have two in two different places so that I'm never kind of screwed. Okay, so this is the rosin I use. I've talked about it before. And if you want, you can go ahead. I'll, there, you can click right there to my previous video, which was all about rosin. You can learn more about as much as I know about rosin basically, and also some embarrassing stories of mine. Okay, this is really important. This is my hearing protection. It is so critical to have really good hearing protection. The minute you start playing in groups, ensembles, uh, even, even some chamber music groups, but especially if you start playing with the local church and they sit you down right next to the trumpet or electric guitar or drums or something like that, you want to be able to protect yourself. Um, I think custom is kind of the way to go. It's sort of an investment. The ear pieces mold perfectly to my ears and then let me see if I can get this for you. This is an example of the tiny little inserts that I can change out. This one attenuates 25 decibels of sound across the board, okay? So I have little discs that can attenuate 9 decibels, 15, and 25 decibels. That way I can, you know, cut down the, the noise appropriately so I never feel like I can't hear myself. If you lose your hearing, it's kind of just gone. So you got to be careful, okay? Okay, final thing, not very exciting. A little cheap pair of nail clippers. This is actually very important to have with you, my bow hand. The thumb, I, I find it more comfortable to have it trimmed really, really short. I think it's easier not to end up kind of squeezing with your thumb or overdoing it with the thumb muscle. So just have these in case, because especially if you tear a nail or something right before you're gonna play, you're gonna wanna fix that. Just a couple more things with some advice for you. Here are my uh, two claws. I use one to take the rosin off the strings and one 
for the rest of the body of the cello. Here's an example of one I bought. Uh, you know, it's a couple bucks off Char Music. And eventually I just got tired of buying more and more cleaning cloths. So what I did with my wife, we both went to a fabric store actually, and we found a material that felt great and soft. It's 100% cotton. It's not abrasive. And so we just bought a swatch of, of material for about 10 bucks. And then we cut it up into 6,000 cloths. I mean, it made so many, it's crazy. And now I have enough for like three or four lifetimes. And that's a way to be a little more economical and also end up with what feels like a surplus of cleaning cloths, but in the end it's great because then you can change them out more frequently, which means you're not gonna end up having a bunch of residue on one cloth and then you're just, again, polishing rosin into your instrument. Final thing is a bag inside of a bag. This is, my wife got me this. It's a bag with little cats on it, but inside, are sort of like the little accessories that I don't want flying around. Here's extra rosin. Uh, this is rosin I recommend if you're not gonna, if you can't get the rosin I like Baker's, this is Olive by Prastro. It even says half the time, this one doesn't, sometimes it even says violin viola, it's great for cello. Advil for if you're a cellist and you're an adult. I have a leather mute and I have a wood mute. I have a rubber mute regular rubber mute. And then this final thing here is something I'll talk about in another video. This is, this little piece of plastic is actually a finger guard for restricting the finger's motion. For me, it was the pinky because I was starting to develop a tiny bit of tendonitis. And that is a segue for another video coming soon, which is going to be kind of body maintenance learning as an adult. And some of the things I've learned about that I would like to share uh, for those of you who might be feeling a little bit of pain or just want to prevent a little bit of pain. So I hope, you know, that was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions about any of the stuff you saw, um, please just let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks so much.